Good morning, everybody. I'm Reverend Rich Carlini, and welcome to Unity Center of Davis. Welcome to our virtual Sunday morning service. We welcome you. We welcome you in the name and through the nature of that living Christ presence, that Christ presence that lives and dwells in the heart of each one of us and in the warm and loving spirit that's come to be known as unity. What a beautiful day it is today as we're approaching spring and Easter's coming. And David Trolley, what are we going to sing this morning? Oh, we have a couple of songs uh, today from Daniel Namad, one of my favorites. So we're going to start with one. God, you are every mountain. God, you are every ocean. God, you are every canyon, every inch of earth and sky. God, you are every morning. God, you are every midnight. God, you are every moment every second of my life everything i see everything i do everything i am is you everything above everything below everything i know is you God, you are every sunrise. God, you are every moon glow. God, you are every star shine, every inch of earth and sky. God, you are every springtime. God, you are every snowfall. God, you are every season every second of my life everything i see everything i do everything i am is you everything above everything below everything i know is you because you are the very breath I breathe and your perfect love created me everything I see everything I do everything I am is you everything above everything below everything I know is you Everything I do, everything I am is you. Everything above, everything below, everything I know is you. And now let's take that song into a time of prayer this morning. As we take a breath and we settle into our worship service, we pray the wonderful <laughs> words of that song. Everything I know, everything I do, everywhere I am, everywhere I go, everything I do is you. This morning, everything I do is you, God. The universe and I are one. There is absolutely no separation. So as we come together this morning, we hold each other in light and love. We hold the world in light and love. We hold the universe in light and love. And we know that every speck of wisdom in divine mind is available to us at every moment for everywhere we are, everything I do, Everywhere I go is you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now it is my pleasure 
to introduce our prayer chaplain for the day, Patricia Wright. Good morning, everybody. S such a wonderful day to be with you, be present and experience the loving kindness, blessing and joy that is Unity Center of Davis. You can connect with any prayer chat, well, with me today, you can connect with prayer chaplains in today by going to our chat, clicking private chat and clicking on Patricia. And you can request a prayer. We, we are available to pray with you for celebrations of celebrations, gratitude or any concerns. And I would be happy to call you later after the service. And we also have a new um, ability to request a prayer at any time. And I believe that you can ch uh, check on the, click on our website and go ahead and ask for a prayer request. And one of the chaplains will call you back wow. for that prayer. It's a wonderful new service and new way to connect with our prayer chaplains. And now is the time in our service that we pray for others. Let us take a moment to bring to mind anyone who's on your heart or your mind this morning for prayer, to include them in this prayer of transforming power of love. You may speak their name. Guidance, I open my mind to divine inspiration and follow my divine direction. Together, I open my mind to divine inspiration and follow my divine direction. Healing, every atom of my being is invigorated with healing life. Together, Every atom of my being is invigorated with healing life. Prosperity. I am prospered by divine love. Together, I am prospered by divine love. And world peace. I am an emissary of peace and harmony in the world. Together, I am an emissary of peace and harmony in the world. And now let us prepare for meditation. God before me, God behind me. To the left and the right God above me God below me All around and inside God above me and for me God behind me, to the left and the right. God above me, God below me, all around and inside. before me, God behind me, to the left and the right, God above me, God below me, all around and 
and inside Deep breath in now, deep breath in and hold it for just a moment. Hold it for just a moment and then exhale. And settle in comfortably wherever you are right now, for this is your time. Your time to know that God is all around me. That I am one with the universe and the universe is one with me, that God and I are one. Breathing in and out, we settle into this time and place and we feel the energy of the universe on the outside of us. Even though there's no separation, we put the boundary of the skin as our outside. And as we sit this morning in comfort and in meditation, we allow the idea that there is no separation to begin to allow that God outside me to become one with the God that we think is inside us. For now we know that God and I are one, that there is no separation and that divine wisdom is there for each of us at every moment, in any circumstance, any event, divine wisdom, spiritual wisdom, the wisdom of all of the universe is ours to call on. So we take a deep breath in and we hold it for a moment and we exhale and we open ourselves up to all the wisdom in the universe. We claim it. I claim my divine wisdom now. I am one with all that is. Breathing in and breathing out focusing on the breath, being a part of everything, everywhere, all wisdom, all love, all faith, all strength. I settle into a time of silence now, knowing, being, loving. In the silence, I am one with everything in the silence. Breathing in and out now, slowly coming back to our virtual worship service, coming back with a feeling of fullness, with a feeling of divine knowing, with a feeling of connection with all that is. I am one with the universe, divine wisdom flows through me now. I move my fingers and move my toes and acknowledge with gratitude 
the time we've spent connecting, connecting with each other through the Christ within, connecting with the divine Christ, the ideas that we express through right thinking in this human experience. I am filled with right thinking, and so it is. We slowly open our eyes and come back to this time and place and to the music of David Trolley. One power, one power, one power. There's one power, invisible, and you see it everywhere and every day. One power, indescribable, and you speak of it with every word you say. Mysterious until you know the truth. As simple as the love inside of you. Call it God. Call it Spirit. Call it Jesus. Call it Lord. Call it Buddha, Bahaluha, angel's wings or heaven's door. But whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? It's the power of the love in you and me. One power, one power. We speak so many languages, have different clothing, different colors, different names. But different is only dangerous when we forget that in the heart we're all the same. We'll remember once we close our eyes and see that each distances were never meant to be. Call it God, call it Spirit, call it Jesus, call it Lord, call it Buddha, Bahaluha, Hashim, or Heaven's door. It's Muhammad, it's your mind, it's your soul, it's your sign. It's the universe, it's music, Mother Earth or Father Time. But whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? Whatever name you give it, it's the very air we breathe. It's the power of love in you and me. It's the moment of creation. It's an everlasting peace. It's the freedom of forgiveness. It's the sweetness of release. It's the joy of inspiration. It's the sunshine on your face. It's the birthright of all nations. It's the boundlessness of space. It's the beauty of a baby. The serenity of sleep it's the anger we abandon it's the love that's most deep it's one power one power one power it's the power of the love that lives forever in you and me it's the power of the love, the love in you and me.
Well, that was that was absolutely beautiful, David Trolley. Thank you. David Trolley is filled with the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. He is a part of all that is. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, well. Thanks for coming to Unity Center of Davis today. I, I have nothing more to say after that. That was beautiful and it's the truth. Thank you. As we move through, well, you asked for it and you got it. You said, can we do a power each month in 2021? And we said, yes. And so we're already here at the third month. And in January, we talked about the power of faith. I got to talk about the power of faith that faith is the uh, perceiving power of mind. Faith is what brings us to forward from imagination and what we use to wrap substance all up into form. And then last week, actually, Robert Hardy spoke so eloquently about the power of strength, that our strength is, is in God and that God stands behind all things, that the universe is there with us in every moment of every time, no matter what with every circumstance, that God is our strength, the universe is our strength in every need. And this week, we're going to look again at a power, the March power, the power of wisdom. But you know, Charles Fillmore in his book, The 12 Powers of Man, said that to call on one of our spiritual faculties is mentally to recognize that power, to identify with it to align with it. So each of our 12 powers are there, each of our 12 gifts, each of our faculties, each of whatever you want to call them is there for us to call on whenever we feel that we need to focus on the spiritual aspects of that power. And notice that I'm saying, the spiritual aspects of that power. I'm talking about divine faith. I'm talking about divine strength. I'm talking about divine wisdom. That it's everywhere present. Each of us have 12 creative powers that are fundamental to us. And these aspects of the na are aspects of the nature of the divine, the very nature of the divine understanding the true potential of these creative energies and how to engage their power leads to living a richly blessed life. Unity co-founder Charles Filmer, who was strongly influenced by the transcendental movement, went on a committed spiritual search. It led him to Eastern spirituality, which he integrated in with the Christianity of his upbringing. He created the 12 power system more than a century ago. And he likened the 12 powers to, remember the old switchboards in Adam Smashing Power of Mine? He said these 12 powers are like a switchboard. We can plug into them whenever we need them. And when we're plugged into all of them, we're totally plugged into the executive branch. While Myrtle was sitting there healing her body, Charles Fillmore was plugging into the executive branch and connecting with these 12 gifts that we have to use whenever we want to call on them. Now, once, once again, I am using as a reference Winifred Wilkinson Hausman, her book, Your 12 God-Given, Your God-Given Potential, Unfolding Your 12 Gifts from God. And just a little bit about Winifred Wilkinson Hausman. She was born in 1922 in Atlanta, Georgia, the eldest daughter of Boyce and Ruby Wilkinson. Prior to entering the Unity Ministry, she was engaged in newspaper advertising and publicity work in Atlanta, Georgia. She made her transition in 2012. She was ordained in 1959 and her husband, Joe, George Rowe Hausman, was ordained in 1967. Several, her other publications include Act or React, It's Your Choice, Love Powered Living, Dealing with Stress Through Spiritual Methods. That's a good one, Dealing with Stress Through Spiritual Methods. Hard to come by now, but plenty of resources on the internet. Winifred uh, and her husband, George, were the founders and co-ministers of Unity Center in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. 
So today we're going to talk about divine wisdom. What is divine wisdom? Well, it's right judgment, not the kind of judgment that you and I like to operate on on a daily basis, not, oh, she's too fat, he's too bald, uh, it, it's too hot, it's too cold, uh, you don't, I don't, you can't, we can't, that kind of judgment, no. That's in the human experience. We're talking about spiritual wisdom, the highest form of spiritual knowing. And it includes divine judgment, discrimination, intuition, and other activities of mind that come under the heading of pure knowing. So here's my story about divine wisdom. And again, as I always say, and I seem to say it a lot lately, it takes practice. No matter what we're working on, we have to practice it. So practicing calling on divine wisdom, let me tell you, I'm still working on it and you're gonna hear that. But as some of you may have heard last Sunday, I offered prayer for my cousin Pasquale, who was my oldest cousin, and he was very sick. and. He demanded, demanded. I guess I could say he demanded that they take all the tubes out that they had in him. He came to and, and he said, I want to go home. I'm ready. And so they did. They took the tubes out of him and they called an ambulance and they called hospice and they got durable medical equipment in the house and he came home and they sent me a picture of him and he looked so peaceful and so filled with love and so happy to be home. And my cousin, and I, I was really, you know, just filled up that, that he made that decision with all my work on grief and on the death cafe and everything and all my years in hospice. And it was just such a great feeling. And then my cousin Josette called me and she said, I have the arrangements. This was the next day. They're actually having an open casket funeral, visitation on Thursday and Friday and a mass on Saturday. And boy, that brought me back to the real world. <laughs> Visitation <laughs> and, a, and a mass. I didn't know what to do, but Josette said, are you coming? Well, ah, am I going? Am I going to Pittsburgh? I want to go. My father would expect me to be there. It's what we do. And to be there for two days, two visitation settings and the funeral and to participate. I said, you know, I'm gonna have to pray about that, Josette, I'll let you know. Cause I really wanted to go. And so I got off the phone with Josette and I thought, I just gotta pray with this about this before I do anything else. And so I closed my eyes and I opened my heart to the universe and <laughs> all I got was no. No, no, you're not going. I mean, it was, it was, it wasn't take a deep breath. It wasn't exhale. It was no. And I said, oh, I must be all doing this all wrong. Uh, let me just look at the airline flights and see if it's even possible. And when can I go? So I called up the airline flights. Well, you know, I don't know if you've looked at airline flights since the pandemic started. I haven't. I haven't really even thought about it but it sure is different when you go there. And my goodness, it would have taken me three airplanes to get to Pittsburgh and not getting up at four, three o'clock in the morning, uh, no matter what I could do. And there were only two airlines really that were going there now. And I said, well, this is gonna be tough. I don't know if I wanna go to three different, air, three different airports and sit in a funeral home and, huh. Well, I'm just not getting answers here, am I? I said to myself. Then I said, I'll call my sister Carol, see what she has to say about it. So I picked up the phone and I called Carol. Now, you know how older sisters are. They're always willing to tell you what to do. And my sister, I love her because she's always willing to give me some advice as to what to do. So I called Carol and I told her what's going on and Carol lovingly said, oh brother, I know that you'll know exactly what to do. You'll know what to do, you'll be told. And I said, oh, 
Well, thank you. Thank you, sister. <laughs> thank you for your help today. <laughs> Goodbye. I get off the phone any other day. She'd be telling me what to do. <laughs> this morning I'm calling her and she tells me that I'll know. I said, you know, I better pray about this. And I closed my eyes and took a breath. And boom, God said, you know, what do you want? You've been told no so many times. Do you want a yes? Go ahead and say yes. Is that really spiritual wisdom? Is that the wisdom that you know from what you have available? No, that's not in the wisdom. No, I'm not ready to go even with two vaccinations. I can send flowers. I can be there in spirit. I can send my love, but no. You know, how often do we call on the universe? How often do we call on these powers, these gifts that we have, and we don't hear the answer? We want to hear what we want to hear. So why do we even take the time to go in and ask for guidance, ask for prayer, ask for wisdom? Why do we try and take the time to connect if we want what we want? And that is not what this power is all about. Wisdom, as I said before, is the highest form of spiritual knowing and it includes divine judgment, divine judgment. Judgment in this sense, meaning right thinking versus error thought. Moving forward in right thinking, I am judging whether it's right thinking or error thinking, not whether or not it'll provide me enough pleasure or whether I like something or not. It's what moves my life forward in right thinking. And the center that is associated with the faculty of wisdom is located very appropriately, excuse me, in the stomach and is closely allied with the solar plexus, the area behind the heart and the stomach that is sometimes referred to as the body brain. So it's right here. And if you just stop and think about that for a moment, and if I had stopped and thought about it for a moment, that first thought after I got off the phone with my cousin that was no, I felt it. I felt it right here in the pit of my stomach. I knew it was no, I didn't have to put myself through all of that air thought. I could have accepted right thinking. Unloving critical thoughts react particularly on the wisdom center at the pit of the stomach and they may result in such ailments as ulcers, indigestion and other difficulties in the area of the stomach and the heart. People that ruminate, people that don't take uh, don't take advantage of spiritual wisdom that worry, that worry about what could be and create what they don't want, and they get an ulcer doing it, come away from not following divine wisdom. The affirmation that's recommended this month for divine wisdom is, I am guided by divine wisdom in every thought, word, and action. Wisdom becomes the blend of knowledge from the head and the heart. So the disciple, as you know, Fillmore put disciples uh, uh, with each power. And the, the disciple for wisdom is James, the son of Debedee, Zebedee, <laughs> the son of Zebedee. And when you think about the stories of Jesus in the New Testament, and when you think about the disciples that were with him at some very, like the Garden of Gethsemane, for example, right before they, they were taking him off to be tried, who was with him? Peter, James, and John. Peter representing faith, John representing love, and James representing wisdom. So, we can look at the teachings of Jesus in following his wisdom for making right judgments. As we follow Jesus in developing our God-given potential, we too must learn to judge with right judgment and to turn to the inner spiritual knowing. 
We cannot afford to allow ourselves to be caught up in judging according to appearances. Making decisions based on simp based simply on intellectual knowledge or accepting limiting concepts constantly presented by the world viewpoint. A great example of that is what we're currently finding out about our own history in America. What we were taught, what the worldly viewpoint was when we went to school isn't what we find when we dig deeper into spiritual knowing and look at what's going on in this earthly world. And if we could just turn to spiritual understanding, wouldn't this be a different place? If the three disciples who were with Jesus on particularly significant events, as I said, were Peter, James, and John. Faith, wisdom, and love must be brought into everything you do. Wisdom without love is cold. Let me say that again. Wisdom without love is cold, but love without wisdom is misguided and impetuous. Wisdom, the highest form of spiritual knowing, includes divine judgment. Wisdom is not dependent on reasoning, intellectual understanding, or deduction. One more time. Hausman says wisdom is not dependent on reasoning, intellectual understanding, or deduction. We can do a lot of book reading, but going inside and deeply knowing all the wisdom of divine mind is available to us. We can know if it, that divine wisdom simply shines as a light from within that illumines the way and reveals whatever needs to be shown at a particular time. No, you're not going. Simple as that. My faculty of wisdom is more developed than I know it. I just have to start to listen to it. Our purpose in developing this faculty is to let the light of spirit shine through us, directing all our thoughts, words, and actions and motivations. Wisdom must also be employed in directing the activities and, and unfoldment of the other 11 gifts. So how do we develop this power of wisdom? Well, Hausman, as she does in her book with each of the 12 faculties, gives us steps to take to practice. And I would say, if you're gonna do this practice, get the book, if you can get it, you'll have to get it used through Amazon and uh, take one faculty at a time. And we're doing one faculty of, at, the, of, at the month, so no need to go back. You can start wherever you are. And here's what Hausman says the seven steps are for bringing forward our spiritual faculty of wisdom. First is unlearning. Well, yep. Uh -huh. I see June Hebb shaking her head, and I love that because she knows we've got to let go first. We've got to unlearn things that we believe that we've been taught that have come out of the worldview. So clear your mind of all ideas of lack and limitation, fear and tolerance and difficulty. Spirit within knows whatever you need to know. This channel is opened as you retain your thinking and move into spiritual intuition, the immediate receiving whatever knowledge you need at the time. And I wanted to stop there for a minute and call your attention to the word intuition. Where do you feel intuition usually? It's right there, isn't it? In the solar plexus. It's that deep knowing. It's that intuition. I don't know how I know this, but my intuition is this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we have to stop. We have to let that through. Is that, even though it's not what I was expecting, is that the right thinking, the right judgment that is going to move me forward to my highest good? To my highest good. It may seem strange at the time, 
But if you look back on those items that came as intuition and you move forward on them because they were right thinking, they were good. They moved you forward to right thinking. So then once we've unlearned what we need to unlearn, we have to learn. Nature, Hausman says, and so truly that nature abhors a vacuum. Replace the old concepts you are unlearning with new spiritual truths. Reject the thoughts that do not belong in your spiritual nature and lay hold of truths which will open you to another way of thinking. It is not enough to release. You must also refill. And then acknowledge it. Step three, acknowledgement. Acknowledgement means mentally accepting what you have learned. It may be so different than what you thought or what you had learned previously. When I do the Breathe a Bridge class and I go in and say, hello, my name is Richard and I am a racist. I am acknowledging what I have learned because I did not think I was a racist, but I am. It's a fact and I have a lot to unlearn. So as I grow in development by acknowledging what I've learned, then I will come to see only the Christ in others. How that fits so well in racism. I'm not judging by the color of someone's skin, but I'm seeing the Christ in others. Once we've acknowledged, we look to reason. Reason is the bridge to wisdom because it leads you into a higher expanded field of knowledge. New concepts come from contemplation and logical thought. Well, as we turn to spiritual wisdom and we acknowledge new spiritual truth, then new concepts come. As we contemplate these through truths, logical new thoughts come to us and we create new realities and we move from reason into insight. <laughs> insight is wonderful. Hausman says, when you are no longer feverishly seeking, you will begin to have inner sight. Well, thank you, Lily. I mean, yes, when we are no longer feverishly sinking, or, I'm sorry, seeking, we begin to have inner sight, the awakening to a clear white light of spiritual knowing. You trust, you know, you go there, you're aware. I don't have to call my sister. I don't have to look at the airlines. I don't have to second guess myself. I see the white light of spiritual knowing. I trust it, I believe in it. And then the last step is wisdom itself. Here, insight becomes complete and enables you to know immediately and discern readily. Not as the world knows or discerns, but from the Christ within. This is the power of wisdom and spiritual judgment as demonstrated by Jesus. Jesus was wisdom. Jesus' stories talk of wisdom. All through the New Testament are examples of Jesus giving us wisdom. Then you know, you absolutely know that you no longer have wisdom, you are wisdom. Through a pure and perfect connection with spirit, you live in the light, you think and act, from the spirit of knowing within you. To bring this to a conclusion, Reverend Alberta Ware from Chicago, Illinois has this prayer of wisdom that I'd like to share with you. In this moment of stillness, I pray and declare my decisions this day will be tempered with wisdom, faith, and most of all love. I am gratefully reminded there is within my being the spiritual faculty of wisdom that can guide my decisions and steer me with steer me away from snap, snap judgments regarding the occurrences throughout my day. I know the presence of God is always available and I take the time to consciously choose to open my mind and heart to the guidance that is always for my highest good. Thank you, God for unfailing wisdom and thank you for being here with us today go forth with failing wisdom unfailing wisdom thank you
Thank you, David Trolley. Thank you for being here with us this Sunday. And now it's time that we stop and honor our tithes and love offerings, the gifts that we give, and we are indeed prosperous at this ministry. Will you say that with me? We, uh, I affirm prosperity for Unity Center of Davis. Together, I affirm prosperity for Unity Center of Davis. We want to thank you in advance and, and ongoing for the tithes and love offerings that you give to this ministry, either through the mail, through the donate button on the website, as you can see here, or by clicking on the link right now that Kevin's placed into the chat room. Just click on the donate link and it'll take you right to the website. I did mine yesterday and it was just like that. I had a receipt come to me very quickly too. Thank you very much. And our offering blessing is this and we'll say it together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. I am grateful. And now please join me in singing our peace song. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth a peace that was meant to be with God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me let this be the moment now with every step i take let this be my joy as well to take each moment and live each moment in peace Now, our prayer for protection together, please. The light of God surrounds us. I am that light. The love of gold God unfolds us. I am that love. The power of God protects us. I am that power. The presence of God watches over us. I am that presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And so it is. Thank you so much for being here today. Don't forget, we're having our annual meeting almost immediately. Please stay on for that.